There are two methods of preparation. Anything less than well-planned preparation is going to be short-term preparation. And that means people thinking that they're going to live in a city and have their backyard garden when 50% of the population are going to be starving. And they're going to be scavenging for food. And even the storage of food that people have in their basements, how long is that going to last when most of the people around you are starving and you feel compelled to help out? And that's only if you're conscious. If you think you can do it without that, good luck. Because when people are starving and they see you eating, people are not rational. They're not civilized when they're starving. This is why there's going to be revolution in most rural countries pretty quickly as fam global famine hits. It's not going to happen so quickly in the United States because we think we're more civilized, but we have a stronger economy, so we will be able to stay a little bit longer before it hurts us each individually. What can you do to prepare? All right, well, it's a little late for some of this, but liquidate all your physical assets because they're going to be worthless. The real estate economy is never coming back. The global economy is never coming back to these levels or anything close to them. So if you have a business that isn't thriving through this time, it's going to collapse. And liquidating means uh, you get the money out and people say, well, what good is money going to do when the economy collapses and currency collapses? Well, currency is going to have use for the next couple of years. Up till probably somewhere mid or the end of 2011, you're going to be able to spend that money. What you spend it on? Well, that's up to you. One option is certainly your preparation. So reducing overhead and expenses, how do you do that? Well, most people can imagine some things that they could do without. Uh, put a little more money away, and you have to move it before the U.S. economy collapses, before we go into depression, and they come out with the Amero. So you want to move it probably into gold, which gold is going to go up through this period. Eventually, you want to take it out of that, too, so you can spend it. As people start to lose their jobs and have difficulty surviving because they can't buy food, can't grow it, there's going to be a communing happening. It's already happening now. I mean, it's been happening for years, right? How many 40-year-olds do you know live with their parents? That's because either they couldn't find a job or it was too expensive to live outside the house. This is going to go to the next level, where families and friends are going to start communing in small groups. This is the next step in sustainable community living. And ironically, it's because we haven't done it naturally that it's being forced upon us. I mean, we weren't designed as mammals to live as isolated, independent souls. We are communal beings. And every time we have thrived, it's because we've come together, not because we've been isolated and separated. A lot of people think, well, there's no such thing as a community that isn't ruled. Well, that's been true in the past. I would say if anybody in our recent past has come closest to an ideal community, it would be the American Indians. The Indian tribes themselves, living off the land in virtually a sustainable environment, the tribal chiefs commune with other tribal elders for the greatest good of the community. Even the horses didn't have to be tied up. Why? Well, they didn't back then because there was a harmony between the horse and the people. They served each other naturally. The Indian just went up, jumped on one, grabbed it by the mane, and rode off. The horse said, fine, we're going to go right off because i got to come back and eat later. Okay, that's harmony with nature. And they had what I saw the closest thing. We have the capability of doing this. Consider the options if you lose your job. Start thinking of what you would do if you lost your job and you're unable to find employment. Think about all the things, A, that you're going to lose immediately. Think about if you can't buy food, what are you going to do? So who is it that you know that you can create a small group with? Is it family? Ultimately, our strongest bonds are with family, but most of them we can't get along with. <laughs> but that's not natural. I mean, that's systemic. We are born to hate our brothers and sisters. We're just trained that if they don't subscribe to what we believe, they are unworthy. Well, that's not useful in a community. Some of these things you're going to have to retrain yourself to understand things in a different way. So, make a list. What are you going to lose when you lose your job, can't find another one, and who are those people who are most likely to be communal participants?
because this is coming very quickly, small groups banding together to reduce overhead and 